Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotac and iOS 16.5 beta four has been out for a few days. I've been using it full time on the 14 pro max as well as the iPad pro. And I wanted to share the overall experience that I'm having and that you're having based off the YouTube community poll. We'll take a look at the experience bugs, battery life, some Apple news, and also what to expect with iOS 16.6 and iOS 17. However, first I wanted to talk about iOS 16.4.1. Some people are still having issue with the weather widget or just weather in general, not showing the correct information it seems to be correct here. And then I turned on airplane mode, so it's working fine, but it works fine there. And also some people are having issues with it becoming worse over time. It seems so at first it seemed to be pretty stable. However, this past week we had iOS 16.4.1's first security response update with 16.4.1 a after installing that most people didn't have an issue, but some did, and you can actually uninstall this if you want to. It's easy to do. Just go into your settings, go to general, then about under your iOS version, you can actually uninstall it and just tap on remove security response. Now I wouldn't recommend doing this as it has security updates, but if it's causing a problem where you can't actually use your device or it's rebooting randomly, you can actually remove it and see if that resolves the issue. If it doesn't just reinstall it as they'll allow you to do that. But it seems like 16.4.1 is okay, but 16.5 is getting better. Now I did want to go over some Apple news. And the first thing is HomePod mini has actually arrived in Denmark this past week. So if you've always wanted a HomePod mini and you're in Denmark, it should be available locally there, or you can order it from Apple. Apple also posted their quarterly earnings results this past week, and this time they're down about 3% year over year in the same quarter. However, they said that they had a 24.1 billion in profit with 94.8 billion in revenue again, which is down 3% year over year, but they also recorded record profit and services this time around with things like iCloud and Apple TV. A lot of their profit is being helped with iPhone sales as well as they don't report specific numbers anymore, but they are selling a lot of different iPhones, whether that be the 14, the 14 pros or pro max or others. And on the call, you can actually listen to it here. I'll link this in the description, but on the call, Apple was actually asked about AI and Tim cook responded that artificial intelligence's potential is very interesting, but it needs some time to be sorted out probably to fix some issues with it and maybe implement privacy concerns. So that's something that maybe we'll see in the future with AI. We're hearing Apple talk more and more about that. We could see that integrated into Siri. I would love to have that. Also on a very positive note, Apple said they're not considering mass layoffs as layoffs would be a last resort. So many people working at Apple won't have to hopefully worry about that as different big companies have been laying off different employees, such as Google and Amazon and others. Apple apparently isn't going to do that anytime soon. It looks like. Now, Apple announced new games this past week for Apple Arcade. If we go into the App Store, go to Arcade, you can see it here where we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. We have What the Car, Disney Spellstruck, Cityscape Sim Builder, and much more. So they introduced 20 new games. It feels like it's been a while since we had a significant update. I've been trying out Cityscape Sim Builder, so I'll try that a little bit more. But let me know if you've tried any of these and which is the best game in the comments below. If you use an Apple card in your Apple wallet, and you're using the savings account, they're paying out interest now. And also if you use Apple card to purchase anything from Nike, you can get 6% back this month up until 531 or May 31st. So that's available now. If you're using Apple card and you purchase anything from their online store or even in the stores locally, if you have a Nike store nearby. Google this past week announced passkey support for Google login. This means if you go to Chrome and you go to log into Google or YouTube or something else, it will now allow you to use passkeys, meaning you no longer have to remember a long password. It will now use authentication using a secure encryption key on your device. It actually communicates through Bluetooth or other means to actually transmit that it's actually you signing in. So this is a new thing that's been set up in a FIDO alliance between Apple, Microsoft, and Google and others, and is now available. So we're, we'll see this more and more through different things such as one password and other apps as well very soon, but this is the future where you don't have to remember your password. You still have it as a backup. If you need to log in along with two factor authentication keys, such as Yubi keys or Google Titan keys, but you can now use passkey support. Let me know if you've used that in the comments below.
Now we've had a bunch of new releases this past week, not just betas, but as you can see here, we have 16.5 beta four, of course, iPad OS, Mac OS 13.4 beta four. And I did want to caution you about this particular release as once we received this, some people installed it and were unable to use their internet, Wi-Fi and ethernet didn't work. They found that it was due to certain types of content filtering apps, such as little snitch and radio silence. And once they disabled those apps or just turned them off, off, the problem was resolved. So if you're having that issue or you're thinking of installing this update, just be aware that that could be an issue. Of course, this week we had a bunch of other updates. I mentioned one earlier, the Apple security response update for 16.4.1 a where they installed some security updates. They haven't said what they are, but they did something we haven't seen before with the AirPods update. We had an AirPods update that brought us to version five E one three five, and they actually updated their security website with information about these. So while they haven't given the latest one, they actually gave security information for the previous update of five E one three three and also the Beats firmware update from the other day for Power Beats Pro and Beats Fit Pro. So if we go into that, you can actually see the security updates where there's just really one for Bluetooth, it seems, or two for Bluetooth, where it says when your headphones are seeking a connection request to one of your previously paired devices, an attacker in Bluetooth range may be able to spoof the intended source device and gain access to your headphones. They fixed this with an authentication issue, which was addressed with improved state management. So they fixed that and the same sort of thing was done for the AirPods update as well. They haven't said what's in 5E135 yet, but at least they've updated the security on these. So you've probably already got that update if you have airpods or beats but i hope they give more information in the future as to what they've actually fixed they also added different entries for previous updates such as ios as well but as far as what's in ios 16.4.1 a we don't know specifically just yet now as far as ios 16.5 features we're seeing very sparse updates compared to ios 16.4 or 16.4.1 maybe we'll know more once we get the release candidate but at this point it seems like they're saving a lot of features for iOS 17. Now, one thing I did want to mention though, is that the poster board app now works again on iPad OS, which allows for custom lock screen access. Again, you can see this on Twitter. This was actually posted by iSoftware updates and you can see they now have the lock screen customization screen on this. So they tested it on beta three, not on beta four, but it seems to actually work, meaning maybe they're getting it ready for iPad OS 17. We don't know that for sure, but it seems like that's in some of the latest rumors and could be coming very soon. Now with beta one of 16.5, we actually had the news app. So the news app got an update with a sports section. And then later on, we actually have an all sports section here, which was added with beta three. We also had the ability to use screen recording using Siri. However, that no longer works. Beta two made it the ability to use beta profiles kind of irrelevant. So there's technically one, but it deletes upon reboot. So you want to make sure you're signed up as a developer or public beta tester. And you can also now install updates with less than 50% battery and not being plugged in. In addition to what I mentioned with beta three, adding that all sports section in the upper left, beta three also added some bug fixes and wording changes in the code. Beta four actually added the wallpaper change. So if you go to add a wallpaper, there's the new section for pride, but you also have unity and others, which they continue to separate. Hopefully we'll get more collections like this with iOS 14 wallpapers going all the way back. I would love to see all of the wallpapers they've ever made split into different sections like that. Additionally, code changes in the wallet actually hint at new digital ID updates. So hopefully in the future, we'll get some more Apple digital ID options if you want to use those for your state ID, but your state has to support it. Now, of course, we're waiting for iOS 17. We're hearing more about the journaling app that's expected to take the place maybe of something like day one, but apparently it's not going to be more of a manually typed entered journaling device, but rather something that captures information from your phone throughout the day however, remaining private. So of course you'd be able to turn this off, but if you want to journal, your phone always has your location. You could put different information in like that to go along with health and more. So we're hearing more about that, more small refinements with things like the control center and more. I don't think it's going to be a huge update, but I do really welcome the stability and hopefully some nice features we're not expecting. Let me know what you would like to see most. Most people say they'd like split screen with two apps at once. 
we haven't really heard a whole lot about that yet. So maybe they'll surprise us with that. Now, as far as the overall experience with 16.5 beta four after the past few days, it's been pretty stable, stable in the sense that it's not crashing. It's not rebooting on its own. It's working as intended, but that doesn't mean there's not issues still. Bluetooth does seem to be much better. It connects to my car. My car actually shows the correct album art. It just seems to work better in general. I've actually found that it works fine with that new AirPods update. Although I wouldn't say it's any better. I'd say it's about the same. I haven't had it disconnect. There we go. It connected. It seems to transfer properly between devices and I really haven't had any issues with it, but I'm just glad that they've updated it and Bluetooth seems to be working as intended. The overall experience is super fluid and I've seen this from others and that goes along with the improvements with performance and more, but most people are saying it's just very fluid in its operation, just smooth. When you open different apps, they seem to be pretty good. What you would expect. Basically you'll see here, there we go. It loaded as expected. Everything's nice and fast and no issues there really. Now there are quite a few bugs that many still seem to be experiencing in particular notifications still is glitchy. When you swipe up, go to your notifications. Sometimes it doesn't respond. Sometimes it's smooth. Other times it just jumps. The spacing is wrong. Sometimes they overlap. So maybe this is because they're going to completely redo notifications in iOS 17. So they've just left it for that, but hopefully they'll fix this in the future. Cell service seems to be worse this time around, despite not really changing anything. As far as the modem update, maybe the software is affecting it, or it could be my carrier, but I've seen the SOS icon come up. I've completely lost service. Then it would work. I'd have to reboot the phone. Sometimes that would fix it. Sometimes it wouldn't. So there's definitely some odd issues there and it seems to be working today, but the other day it wasn't again, it could be my carrier, but let me know if you're seeing the same sort of thing. Also, one thing I've noticed is if I turn off, do not disturb the wallpaper actually jumps back to the first wallpaper. So you'll see I'm on this wallpaper. If I turn on, do not disturb or turn it off. It jumps to, well, this time it didn't do what I wanted it to, but it jumped back one wallpaper. Sometimes it jumps back to the first wallpaper I had set on this device. So I've seen that over and over. Sometimes it works right or properly. Other times it doesn't. Also, I've heard a few people say that announce calls is not either working at all or is blasting them with a very high audio volume. Max Weinbach on Twitter complained of this as well. And you'll see here, he actually warned people on Twitter, be warned on the latest iOS 16.5 beta. When notifications come into AirPods and you have announcements turned on, it will blast the music to 100% for the duration of the announcement. I've heard this, I've heard it just doesn't work at all. So it's definitely an issue there. My health app is still crashing where I've showed this before. If I go into medications and then tap on the log here, it just crashes. So, and you'll see it actually says, do I want to share this information? I've done that already and reported it in feedback and make sure you do the same thing if you're having issues as well. But that seems to be a continual in issue for many people. Also, some people are saying the MagSafe animation isn't working as well as the MagSafe cases or wallets not working properly. My wallet seems to work okay as far as that goes. So let's go ahead and try that out. I have my wallet here. You'll see there. Yeah, maybe it doesn't work sometimes. It seemed to work regularly for me, but let's try it again. There we go. So sometimes it might work for you. Sometimes it may not work properly. Also, some people have said that their apps are crashing, but that could just mean they need an update from third party apps and not the Apple apps, but third party apps. Also, some people are seeing a wake up delay with the iPhone 13 pro phone. Still, when you go to wake up your phone, sometimes there's a delay that's just not normal. So hopefully that's resolved soon. Again, report this in feedback. If you have a 13 pro and you're having that issue, they can use those logs to fix that issue. Also on iPad, some people are saying that stage manager isn't allowing them to place their windows where they want. It's causing problems for them. So lots of really strange issues this time around, and hopefully Apple can fix most of these, at least for iOS 17 at the very least for that, but hopefully with iOS 16.5, as far as the camera is concerned, many people have said that they really haven't seen an improvement there. I think the ability to turn off HDR would be great. It over processes the photo specifically in different light and different skin tones, much differently than what you had with an iPhone 12 or even 13. So that's something I think hopefully they'll improve in the future, but they haven't mentioned or even acknowledged that it's an issue despite many other big YouTubers making videos about it. Hopefully we'll see them address that soon. And if you're wondering if you should install iOS 16.5 beta four, I would say at this point, we're very close to a release candidate. I would probably wait as there's a few bugs that are still existent here. So 
just really hold off. And if you're trying to improve something, wait for that release candidate. And I would expect the release candidate as soon as next Tuesday. At this point, usually after beta four, we get a release candidate. So Tuesday or Wednesday, we could see that with a final release the following Monday. Lately, Apple's been releasing the final versions on Monday. So we could see that May 15th with possibly iOS 16.6 on the 16th or 17th. However, Apple could change that. And of course, on June 5th, we'll see iOS 17 beta one if Apple continues to do what they've always done. According to Aaron P613, he's also thinking iOS 16.5 RC is coming next week based off some recent information with carriers. He's also just said some carrier bundles just went live requiring iOS 16.5 and watchOS 9.5 likely means RCs are coming next week. He's been pretty spot on. It seems to make sense to me as well, based on Apple's track record. Now, as far as overall battery life, well, it seems to be not too much different for me, but if we go into battery, battery health and charging, I'm down to 97% battery health. I've talked about this before. I currently have 174 cycles. You can see here on coconut battery, and I'm not too concerned about it, but it is something that probably will go down a little bit more before iOS 17 is out and iPhone 15. So it's worse than it normally is for me year over year, but at this point, I'm not too concerned about it. As far as the battery life itself, let's go to the last day here. It hasn't been great. Two hours and 59 minutes of screen active time, seven hours and 59 minutes of screen idle time, and I used over 75% of my battery. The day before, I probably would have only gotten five hours of screen active time. The day before that, probably seven hours. So it really needs an improvement here. I've tried to modify things on the home and lock screen, not to show up as much. And it's just not what I would expect from this. I had much better battery life and battery health with iPhone 13. It could have something to do with the always on display or something else, but either way, it's just not what it used to be, at least for me. As far as performance, I already mentioned it's nice and smooth. And as far as the overall heat is concerned, it's staying nice and cool. I'm seeing this from a lot of people. I'm not too concerned about this, but as it gets warmer outside, many people are concerned. If you're using a case and you're seeing the overheat message on your iPhone, then it's a concern. Otherwise, if you're playing games, it's going to get a little bit warm. It will process and that's pretty typical for these phones. As far as the overall temperature, let's take a look. You can see at the hottest point, we're at about 31.4 degrees Celsius or 88.5 degrees Fahrenheit or so. Now, as far as what you had to say in the YouTube community poll, let's take a look at some of your comments. And the first comment says beta four is so smooth compared to previous betas, the best for me in a while. And you're going to see a big contrast between some people and other people's experience. I'm using iOS 16.5 beta four on an iPhone 13 pro max, and it seems a little worse than beta three keeps losing connection and dropping off Wi-Fi. I had to turn off the Wi-Fi related shortcut automation because it was getting annoying and kept going off all night night. Siri announcements on AirPods are also acting up, making the music louder, but not actually hearing the message. I've reported on feedback app. Thanks for the videos iPhone 12 pro iOS 16.5 beta four is running well with good performance and great battery life. Battery life appears to be a little better than beta three and Stacy gray 4731 said I'm using iOS 16.5 beta four on my 14 pro. I had one complete freeze shortly after installing where the phone became completely frozen for approximately one minute, but then it just started working normally. The notifications area on the lock screen is still a juddery buggy mess. This really needs fixing in iOS 17. I cannot see that being fixed in iOS 16. Now, given that it's been broken for so long, other than that, it's been great. Battery life has been excellent so far, but no better or worse than other betas. So that's everything with iOS 16.5 beta four. It's almost here. iOS 16.5 is almost available to the public and almost ready. I'm looking forward to iOS 17, of course, where we'll get new features and hopefully stability. Let me know what you're looking most forward to in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. <laughs>